I am really confident in saying that Starfield will be a great game, or at least a good game, but I think it kind of goes without saying that Bethesda have had a rough few years, especially with Fallout 76 alone, so Starfield is really their chance to prove themselves and show that they aren't this kind of money-grabbing company that Fallout 76 made them out to be. And because of this, there are a few things that could just absolutely ruin Starfield, and I kind of want to go over that in today's video and just sort of talk about my concerns. So without any further hesitation on my part, let's just get straight into it. Now this one has been confirmed that it's not going to happen, but of course we need to mention online, right? I think we can all agree this game will be and should be 100% pure single player only. Bethesda needs to go back to their roots with Starfield to make people forget about Fallout 76 and remind everyone why we fell in love with their games in the first place. Fallout 3, Morrowind, Oblivion, we've got to get back to these types of games, keeping it all completely offline. But obviously, as I mentioned, Bethesda have confirmed that Starfield will be offline, so I guess we don't need to really worry about this. And this next one also kind of fits into the whole don't do things that you did with Fallout 76 category, and that's microtransactions. And look, I get it. You want to make more money. Everyone does, Bethesda. I don't mind a few minor transactions, but it becomes a problem when you overdo it. Take Ubisoft, for example. Now, I won't lie to you guys, I'm not a big Assassin's Creed fan. Maybe it's because I never played it as I was growing up, but regardless, I really got into Assassin's Creed Valhalla because I love Vikings. It's a small obsession of mine. Anyway, my point is, when you first play that game, you notice the store and everything on there is just ridiculous. You have these weapons, armors, and skins that all launch with the game, and sure, they're cool, but it gets to a point of... If you're launching a game with this stuff ready for everyone to pay for, why wasn't it just added into the base game? It's greedy, right? And once again, Bethesda has the exact same issue with Fallout 76. So things like this are an absolute no-go, at least to me. I'll be severely disappointed in Bethesda if I boot up Starfield for the first time and it's filled with a store of items that should have just been included in the base game. But moving away from most of the online stuff, I want to talk about choices. Your choices in Fallout 4 were okay at best, at least to me. I've talked about this before, I really love Fallout 4, but it's genuinely one of my favourite games, but the lack of choice really sucks. Every ending is basically the same unless you side with the Institute, and there's no real consequence. And Skyrim is even worse with this. The only real choice you have that kind of has something to do with the main story is whether or not you want to kill Pathanax. And if you don't want to decide, you can just outright ignore it, so it's really not a big deal. I really, really want Starfield to have a lot of choices and consequence. I want to regret decisions I made. I want to feel like a real struggle between the choices and whatever I pick. I want it to have an actual impact on the world and the story around me. Bethesda games have really lacked in choices and consequence in the last few years in my opinion, and I really want to see it be more of a focus in Starfield, and all of their future games for that matter. I'm also concerned about the 1000 planets thing, you all know this, I've talked about my concerns about it before. I love the idea of 1000 planets, but the reality is all of them, besides like 3 or 4 or maybe 5 at most, will just be empty resource farms. And I understand that basically every planet in real life is like this, and Bethesda are trying to take a realistic approach, so I get it, but my issue is I don't see the point in going to all of these planets at all if all we're doing is collecting resources. It's going to feel a little boring, in my opinion. As long as Bethesda have unique enemies on each planet, or a few real locations on each planet, even if they're just one or two small locations to explore, or even unique treasure, or things to read to learn about the lore, I'll be happy. I just don't want it to be an empty land filled with nothing besides resources. I hope that that makes sense. And this next one is kind of a really basic worry, but... Either way, it keeps popping into my head. What if the game is bad? I mean, it looks good. In fact, I think it looks great. The thing is, we haven't had a real Bethesda game in nearly eight years. When Starfield comes out, it will be eight years. Yes, Fallout 4 is nearly eight years old, if you can believe it. The thing is, if Starfield isn't good, we're going to have to wait at least another four years for Elder Scrolls 6. But with that said, I'm probably going to like Starfield. I've genuinely enjoyed every single Bethesda game. I've enjoyed Arena and Daggerfall. I really liked Oblivion. I loved Morrowind, Skyrim, Fallout 3 and Fallout 4. I don't like Fallout 76. So there's like a 99% chance I'm gonna like Starfield. 
I just worry that it's going to be bad because if it is, we're going to have to wait even longer for the next BGS game. But I don't actually think it will be bad. I think it's going to be good. And the final thing that I want to talk about in today's video is companions. You all know I love Fallout 4's companions. I think they're the best companions that Fallout or Bethesda have ever done as a whole. I think the like slash dislike, love slash hate system is really good, but obviously it needs improvements. I like my companions having backgrounds, stories, and personal quests. I really, really love Fallout 4's companions, and I think Bethesda stepped it up massively from Skyrim's robotic companions. However, shortly after the Starfield Showcase, Todd confirms that we can bring our crewmates to land with us. Todd also mentioned that crewmates can be hired to work on our ships and basically be settlers, right? Well, I'm worried these crewmates are going to replace companions because Todd said we can bring them to land with us. I really, really don't want to go back to the empty, boring companions of past Bethesda games with zero personality and zero story. I mean, why do you think everyone loves Serana? Sure, I love her because she's my wife and she's beautiful, but I mostly love her because she's the only companion in Skyrim that actually has a personality. And a story. Honestly, this companion thing is my biggest worry because I love companions in Bethesda games, but after how great they were in Fallout 4, I'm going to be very disappointed if we don't get the same level of companions in Starfield. Anyway guys, those are my biggest worries when it comes to Starfield. Don't take this video the wrong way, I am obviously super excited for Starfield, I think it looks fantastic and I think it's going to be great. But let me know what you think about this in the comments below and if you have any worries. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like. It really does help out smaller channels like myself. And if you want to stay up to date on Starfield leaks, news, discussions and plenty of other content, please consider subscribing because we cover it all here. Also, I just want to thank everybody for 800 subscribers which we hit yesterday. You guys are the best and I cannot thank you enough. With that said, thank you all for watching and I really hope to see you in the next one.